Hello, this is Jovan Poff. Jovan, Jesse Cullen, yeah. Hey, Jesse, how are you doing today? Glad to be alive. Same here. Thank you so much for taking <laughs> the time to call me. All right. Um, so I am with Bullet Music. We are a music source, um, and we are starting to spread all across the nation, but I'm actually from Nashville, uh, Tennessee, and I know that you have an upcoming, uh, show at the City Rhino, uh, Winery. Yeah. Yeah. So I love Music Coming City. Right yeah. Um, what, so my first question actually is about Nashville. I'm from Music City and I absolutely love it. Um, what is your favorite memory associated with Nashville? Do you have one? Well, I think I only played there once. And, oh, really? Um, yep. Yeah, and it was in a little theater where my sound man said, you know, it's right this spot you're standing in when we were doing the sound check, he said. I hugged Dolly Parton right at that spot. <laughs> that, that's a good, that's definitely yep, a spot to good. be remembered. <laughs> yep, I was just, yep, I just kind of brushed past. So, uh, for me, I now live uh, in the South and fairly, um, fairly close to Nashville. Um, and I'm about to start getting to know it because I think that's the next place I want to record. I have a young band, and uh, so we're going to go a couple of days early and uh, look at some studios and uh, that's make awesome. some friends and in the music business there. And well, this yeah, is definitely like definitely a really good place to record. Um, so you're touring for the first time in a while. How's your tour going so far? It's wonderful. I had, I had no, uh, I had no intention when I quit seven years ago of ever doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get away but, from it, can you? <laughs> you know, I want to, yeah, you don't want to say never. Uh, my son was graduating, uh, not this past spring, but the one before that from Berkeley College of Music and I went up there to hear his uh, senior recital and all the young people being playing with just all Berkeley uh, uh, students which just blew me away and uh, a light came on somewhere inside <laughs> me that I want to hear these young people play my music and I want to be there in the middle yeah, so. That is awesome. That so, it, yeah, here I am. Awesome. Uh, I have seven, seven twenty sons and uh, amazing talent come out of that school. Wow. Uh, yeah. That is pretty and impressive. We're, just, we're having the time of our lives. That kind of that goes along actually with one of the questions I was going to ask you. Um, mm -hmm. my, one of the questions that I had, um, was what is the biggest difference between playing music back then and playing music now? I'm not sure there is a difference. Uh, for me, it's all because, uh, <laughs> a lot of the time I'm playing with the same people. Yeah. Uh, it would be wonderful, and uh, it's the reason we went to South by Southwest to try to reach some younger people with this. Um, and I miss the, I miss the, uh, I miss the free music. Oh uh, yeah, there was a lot of that in San Francisco, and uh, that was how we built an audience. Really, although we had a. You know, when we moved there in 1967, we had a record on the radio. And whether you knew, the Get Together came out twice. It came out in the Summer of Love, which was not yet called the Summer of Love. <laughs> and it was a hit just on the West Coast, um, mainly on the North Coast, San Francisco to Seattle. Um, and for us, it was, we were stuck. 
started in New York, we flew out there. And, I mean, we walked in the Avalon Ballroom. We'd never seen so much hair in our lives. <laughs> and, you know, the rest of the band was still wearing suits and ties. And, um, you know, it was time to take off those funky street clothes. Wow. Uh, and we found a home just like that. So, I mean, we went right home and we finished the record. Uh, earth music that we were making and we packed our stuff and moved. That is a um, time period that I definitely wish that I could have experienced. Yes, and several of the people, the young people in the band too, and um, our guitar player especially. He's always thought it was such a marvelous period in music. It was. Uh, yeah. I mean, you, could turn, you could turn on FM radio and and hear uh, an hour of music you had never heard before. See, get together. By, get together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, and the bands, and, and nobody sounded like anybody else. And it was all different. And, you know, uh, it's an incredible time. A musician like myself could turn on the radio and learn things. Wow. Uh, and be inspired by it. Um, it um, was a time of expect, you know. Back back then, after, you um, being inspired. Who who were your main influencers, and who, who were you inspired by? Well, I think. I came up in folk music, so I had a lot of heroes in folk music. Um, Mississippi John Hurt, mm-hmm. Pete Seeger, Lightning Hopkins. I was, I got to know Lightning and, and John also. Um, and then, Tegan Walker, who I never met, but you, you saw him all the time when I was in college. Um, and when we were playing folk music, uh, the fellow I formed the Young Bloods with, Jerry Corbett, he lived in Cambridge, uh, and Cambridge was the center, Cambridge Mass, the center of the folk scene. Um, um, we started, we got to know each other, and we started coming to my gigs. Everybody was playing solo back then, mm-hmm. and most of us were. And um, then Clouds came in, and Amonica. And started singing with me a beautiful baritone voice that you hear underneath mine when I'm getting together. Uh, and then we kind of looked at each other and said, the Beatles have just come out, I think. Uh, and I said, wow, pop music doesn't have to be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe we should get some amplifiers. So that was a, that was a big inspiration right there. Wow, yeah, that and we got, is huge. And we got into it, and, uh, and then we couldn't find a bass player. Uh, and so we had three guitar players, one of them was me. And I said, um, and the other guys were both more into lead guitar. And I thought, you know, if McCartney can do this, I can do it. I mean... I know all the root chords of the songs, and that's what the bass player had done. So I went and brought a bass and, and learned how to play bass. And by the time we made Get Together, I might have been playing a year or maybe less. I don't know. That's always, I always find that it's um, harder for a band to find a bass player than anything else. Yeah, why is that? I don't know, but it is seen a lot. <laughs> I think it, a lot of people maybe find the guitar, um, I don't know, cooler, maybe? You get a better mm-hmm. image as a guitar player or singer. Yeah. At Berkeley, um, uh, when my son went to school, Berkeley College of Music, you know, the bass department, I think I remember, he told me once, the bass department was maybe 300. You know, there were like fifteen or eighteen hundred guitarists. <laughs> right. So, yeah, that's the ratio. So, that's why bass players are hard to find. You were on them. 
my son plays bass in the six string. Oh, nice. He's the marble this player, yeah. My, uh, and he helped, he helped me put this young band together. I'm excited to hear you guys. Um, Get Together is a song that still resonates with people today. Um, you know, I, I see people either on YouTube or on some blogging sites talking about how you how much your music and the song Get Together in particular um, resonates with them still to this day because of everything that was happening in the 60s. Um, did, did you expect it to be an age-old hit? No, I wasn't thinking in those terms. Uh, you know, I wasn't sure I'd make it past 30. <laughs> I feel the or same. If I, trusted, <laughs> if I could be trusted once I had turned 30. Um, <laughs> it, it just happened. It is a gorgeous song. I did not write that song. But Dino Delaney wrote it. I discovered it at a, in Grants Village when the young boys were just starting out at an open mic. Uh, at the Cafe of Go Go, and uh, it just blew me away. And I rushed backstage. Uh, Buzzy Lenhart was playing it. Uh, I had only seen Buzzy play with Tim Harden uh, there in the village at that time, along with Richie Havens and and, and uh, the Spoonful. And, um, and I, yeah, I'd never done that. I rushed backstage and said, "Dude, I have to have one." Yeah. The lyrics, please write them out for me. I'm in love. And uh, I took it into rehearsal with the young book the next day. And then it was. I mean, it, and uh, Magic in the Studio. It had been recorded before the Kingston Trio recorded it in 1964. Um, the airplane recorded it up with that. I just was reading about it the other day, and a couple of other people that I'm not sure of. Hamilton Camp, who's a wonderful folk singer who became like a television actor, made a beautiful album and a beautiful version of Get Together, but, you know, it was not. His album was like some money for albums, not selling very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was uh, it was just magic, you know. When I fell in love with that song, I I knew that I had discovered my my lifelong partner. Wow, yeah. That... Um, and um, so I think, and the whole that song is just this quintessential, tiny, but incredibly mystical and. Uh, Explanation of the sixties and the and the and the dilemma, the ex, existential dilemma that was facing all of this. Um, Love is but a song we sing, fears the way you die. Right, and you know the song is still listened to yeah. to this day. That you know people find strength in it, even in this time era and period, and the things happening. I think I'm singing it today because uh, my country needs me. Yes. We're in a hellacious, polarized place. The same, a, a very different, but there was a lot of polarization, you know. And of course, all of us young men were on the chopping block for Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a life or death issue, kind of. Um, and now... Real spring of hate, hatred and bigotry it just kind of boiled up uh, it, or come to the surface anyway um, it, in a new way and we are once again uh, since the Trump presidency I think really more and more um, opposed two or three or four sides opposed to each other are polarized and get together is is a song that says no life is beyond that right yeah it is the, uh, I don't I, I don't want to make the angels cry I want to make the mountains ring yes uh, you know? that's right and um, so I think that's why I'm back out here I have no plans to do this and to put 
together with band and we start playing again in the summer of love, the 50th anniversary wow. of the summer of love, which all just happened. To, you know, the way I walked into a club and found get together and thought, this is it, this is my future, this is my life's partner, and certainly the last show I play on this earth, we'll have get together. <laughs> <laughs> As it definitely should. And, um, you know, uh, outside of the Young Bloods, you had a really extensive, impressive discography. Um, do you have a favorite album? No, they're all, they, they all had their favorite parts. And really, the process of recording the kids. Um, I think difficult and stressful for most musicians. When you play live, the mistakes that you make and the, the wrong when you play a wrong chord, I mean, it comes and it's gone. And most people don't even know it's there. Okay. It just it just goes into the music and live music is just goes into the air and goes in the, and then just flies up into the cosmos or wherever it goes. Um Recording um, is more painstaking, but there's, there's a great joy that comes at meeting the challenge. Um, and uh, I think all of my records have those places that I can remember or those songs that were hard to get or hard and that had to be changed or rewritten or just it was difficult to get a great take of. It's amazing the writing process. How one day you'll you'll be writing, and then all it takes is twenty four hours, and that next day you look at it and you see something else you need to add or change, or the editing process. Yeah, or roll up and throw in the garbage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, usually, the beginning of the song for me has at least a couple of pages of like what looks to me a week later of nonsense. Uh, and that's just my mind looking here and looking there, looking here, looking there, and they're all uh, dead ends, but they somehow lead to, and then two pages later or three pages later, there's this, there's this beautiful gem of a, a lion or a beautiful shining lion or something that just, and yeah, you just pick that up. It is. And, uh, Writing is um, writing is a huge passion of mine. So I know that you know, you are really big songwriter. Um, and do you, what are some of your inspirations? Well, I write for my life, so I have to be. I have to submit to that process. I have never, it's always been like magic to me. A song will come to me and I've experienced something and it could have been five years ago or five minutes um, and triggers something in me that says this moment needs to be uh, memorialized were made part of memory, held as part of memory, uh, our collective memory. And I think sometimes I think of myself as a, I'm a reporter uh, for my generation, certainly during this period I was. And I, um, there I was in New York City where people never look at each other in the street, at least in those days. And singing Get Together and my manager, she told me, what, what's with this Get Together song? It's just like, we don't, you, you know, you're kind of an angry young man. This is not up your alley. <laughs> <laughs> Little did he you know, I mean, this is to be my future mantra. So there I am, I'm a reporter. I have to experience something to report in that, that um, I'm kind of a free will reporter. I'm not paid um, by the hour. So I have to run across something that triggers 
the desire in me to make that photograph, that, uh, that beautiful musical photograph of this moment, whether it's something that happened in the woods or something that happened in the street or something I read. Um, That is a really good analogy as far as, um, you know, being a, like a freelance reporter. And that truly is how it is. Um, As far as music goes, who who are you listening to nowadays? Any favorite artist? Who am I listening to? Yes, my daughter. She's listening to Billie Eilish. 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 Business school, um, and she's been a songwriter since she's twenty-two, and she's been a songwriter since she was thirteen. And I always thought she should give it a go because she's very talented and a beautiful voice. And I've always she's my fourth child in my life, and I always wanted a singer mm-hmm. <laughs> um, in the family because my mother was a beautiful singer, and the voice is passed down. Part of it must be genetic. Um, I think so. <laughs> and um, she's just released her first single. Um, it's on Spotify. Uh, her name is Jazzy, J-A-Z-Z-I-E, Young, uh, U-N-G. And if you put Jazzy Young into Spotify, it's amazing. You know, she made this decision three weeks ago. And uh, she's been working with a local guy here in our small town in South Carolina doing very modern sounding stuff that I had no idea uh, how to produce. Uh, I had made a demo with her earlier on that was just her playing the piano, but she really wanted to make a record. I mean, a, a modern sounding record. So she's been working on it, and I got to just turn around and release it. Wow. First that- time. That is so impressive. I actually, I cannot wait to check her out. I'm going to check her out um, once we get off the phone on Spotify. Yes, do. Jazzy do. Young, J-A-Z-Z-I. Mm. Can't wait to. Yeah. Awesome. I can't wait to check her out. Yeah. So I see that you're now in the coffee business. Um, I don't know if I've ever had morning, morning Sun coffee, um, but what's been your favorite part about running that different type of business um it was a way for me to the rich top house burned down the forest fire in 1995 and becoming a farmer we had that little farm in hawaii but it was just to get away from the music business that would go over there and then at that point jazzy was one um, and two, this you know, Tristan, my son, was four. And the house burned down, and um, I said, uh, I said, well, I'm going to go live in Hawaii. Okay. We had a little house over there with um, two bedrooms. I said, we can go out, some bedrooms. We've got the insurance money coming. Let's, let's go live on the farm. I mean, I was brought up in New York City. Uh, I was ready for the adventure of being a farmer. And uh, I think being close to the earth and learning all these things I had to learn about coffee, which is one of my favorite languages, was um, helped to heal me because losing the rich top house is a tremendous loss. I never dreamed that that would happen to me. And everything in it, mm-hmm. you know, just when your house disappears overnight as it dies in these forest fires uh, when you build among the trees and you just come back and your house is gone you know a couple things you know, a piece of your a wood stove you know cast on and maybe survives but that fire was so hot it burned most of the cement columns that held up my house wow yeah it's a traumatic experience and I of course I see it every year in the west when the fires burn and it always breaks my heart I see people pictures of people standing there looking at the smoldering ruins of their houses or I know what they're going through when they're evacuated because yeah that's what they did to us the fire was burning and 
the fireman came by and said, you know, I think it's all right. It's not going to reach us. And then, you know, half an hour later, the winds switched, and they came back and said, you got 10 minutes to get out. That the fire's still on. Yeah. I could not imagine. Here recently in Gatlinburg, there was a um, forest fire. They had to evacuate, and um, I know a lot of people lost their houses and businesses. I haven't been up there since it happened. Where was this? Uh, it was in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Yes, Gatlinburg, yes. I, I saw it on the map, and I said, my God, I remember when it happened because I was thinking, oh, man, it is. When it was happening, I was right there with the people thinking, like, God, I hope the wind turns, guys, and your house don't burn, because it's hell. Yeah, I imagine that that. it brought you straight back to your experience. Yeah, it does. It it did. And uh, we have a house up in the mountains. Uh, It was actually uh, on the other side of the Smokies. Um, We have a little cabin in North Carolina, uh, and we go up there. The heat, I'm down here in the, we call the Piedmont, and the heat is wicked in the summer. And we were up there, and there, uh, you know, there was drought. And there, we had fires going near our home. And <laughs> we were doing a lot of serious praying down here. Absolutely. That's the first thing right. that I would do. Yeah. That's all you can do. I mean, that's true. That, well, that's right. Um, uh, yeah. I was saying, Lord, please don't do this to me again. And all those people around me, yeah. So that's right. Uh, the summer of the Gatlinburg fire, it, we were in drought also on our side of the Blue Ridge. And, uh, or actually, it's the Smokies down where we are. And, um, there were fires burning on our side too. Mm. They never quite, thank God, got to our house. Good, good. And you know, um, all yeah, all we can do is to pray that the rain comes when we need it to come. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I am actually going to be. I'm a. I really love New York City. I've been a couple times, and I'm actually going again in September. At the end of September, I'm going to visit. Um, I don't have any family up there. I just like, I just love the city. Um, do you ever miss New York City? No. No, I was born, raised there, and then I spent, um, I guess until I was 26. So I spent six or seven years living on the Lower East Side, um, working different jobs, and then folk singing in the village, you know, at basket houses where you have to, we sing for free and then pass the basket. It's a pretty skinny, <laughs> a skinny living. And, uh, and then what, so during a folk career and then uh, young boys, when we formed the band in Cambridge, I said, okay, everybody has to move to New York. Please. That's where my manager is, and that's where the music, that's where the record labels are. We gotta get down there and uh, own our stuff. So, yeah, that, that was, you know, quarter of a century was turning up New York for me. I get that. I um, even even though I love the city, I can only visit it. I because I'm such a con- uh-huh. I'm a country girl, so I would definitely miss the wide open spaces. Yeah. I- I mean, I wrote songs about the country when living in New York and dreamed about, oh, because my parents sent me to camp, that's why. So I knew what the country was. I just had never lived in it for more than, you know, four weeks or whatever it was. Um, And um, I was bitten by that bug early on. Um, So when the Young Bloods, when we discovered San Francisco and found that we had a hit record there and that we could work. Um, Instead of starting in New York, we moved out there, but we moved 30 miles north where, that's where I built the Ridgedale House, uh, out in the country, way out in the country, beautiful. And uh, that was a dream come true for me. 
that is uh, I've always wanted to go to San Francisco, but I have never been, so I have to put that on my to-do list. So. Well, I'm gonna. Yeah, go ahead. If you've got a couple more questions, I'm gonna have to get going here. Yeah, no problem. I was actually. Um, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Oh yeah, you're welcome. And we're looking forward to seeing you in Nashville, and I am definitely looking forward to checking your daughters. Um, checking your daughter out on Spotify. So thank you so much, Mr. Young. Yes, do do check Jazzy out. She is, uh, I don't know. I think she's going to be a star. I hope so. Really a star in your father's eyes. But yeah, it <laughs> takes a lot of building, a lot of work, and you have to give yourself to it. And, and not, once you make up your mind, you have got to um, you have got to be devoted and and you have a strong desire and just stay on it I mean sometimes it takes 10 years some artists longer for people to pay the kind of attention to you that uh, make it possible for you to actually play music and make a living that's that's a big well, I know that um, I know that she's gonna have a lot of great advice from you. Yes, yeah, she will. So. Well, thank you again. Yeah, thank you so much for calling uh, in. My pleasure. All right, Jesse. You take care. God bless. God bless. Bye bye.